WCBI News at 10 starts now. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Selena Schaefer. The Mississippi Highway Patrol is still investigating a head-on collision in Benton County that claimed the life of a Myrtle teenager. Troopers say that 51-year-old Ronnie Parker of Potts Camp was traveling eastbound in the 1999 Ford F-350 when he apparently crossed over into the westbound lane and collided head-on into a 2013 Chevrolet SUV driven by 18-year-old Allie Thomas of Myrtle. Thomas was airlifted to Region 1 in Memphis, Tennessee and later died from injuries sustained from the crash. Her brother, 20-year-old Christian Thomas, was transported to Baptist Hospital in New Albany with moderate injuries. Parker was transported to Baptist Hospital in New Albany as well, where he was treated and released with minor injuries. Troopers continue to gather evidence from the crash scene that indicates Parker may have been under the influence of alcohol at the time of the crash. Well, starting tomorrow, Monday, February 27th, the first phase of Highway 12 median construction and signal improvement will begin. This phase impacts the area between Old Highway 12 and Eckford Drive. MDOT advises this phase is scheduled from February 27th through November 8th of this year. The Starkville Police Department will provide Mississippi Department of Transportation updates as this project progresses. Well, Tupelo residents can get an up-close look at the new police department tomorrow afternoon. The city is doing an official ribbon cutting for the $10 million facility at 2 p.m. After the brief ceremony, citizens will get the chance to walk through the brand new facility. Officers have been working out of the new headquarters since late last year. The building puts all of the main agencies under one roof for the first time and is projected to have a useful lifespan of at least 50 years. Well, the new head of the Democratic National Committee is laying out his plans for the party as Democrats try to capitalize on opposition to President Trump. A new poll shows Mr. Trump's approval rating hitting a record low. Wendy Gillette reports from New York. A great American, Mr. Tom Perez. The newly elected chairman of the Democratic National Committee says unity is the key to bring momentum and election victories back to the party. We have to rebuild our parties in, in the 50 states, in the territories, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Former Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders says the new chairman needs to make changes. The way the Democratic Party has been run for decades has not worked. We need a total transformation. We've got to open up the party to working people, to young people. The party will try to seize on Democrats' opposition to President Trump. A new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll shows 44 percent of Americans approve of how President Trump is doing his job, a record low for a new president. 48 percent disapprove. As the president hits back against negative news reports and leaks within his administration, he tweeted Saturday that he won't attend the annual White House Correspondents' Dinner. I think it's kind of naive of us to think that we can all walk into a room for a couple of hours and, and pretend that some of that tension isn't there. President Trump and the First Lady are hosting the nation's governors at the White House tonight for the annual Governor's Ball. Wendy Gillette for CBS News. And the president will give his first speech to Congress Tuesday night. Well, it's now time to turn it over to weather for our first look with meteorologist Griffin Hardy. Griffin, how's it looking out there? Well, we've got some showers that are beginning to develop all farther off to the north and west. Some are gradually making their way into our northern counties. These originated from the Delta and have been crossing I-55 over the past hour. And they have made their way into parts of Tippa, Alcorn, and Union counties, affecting Oxford and moving towards New Albany right now. Hasn't quite made it to Columbus just yet. We are sitting at a comfortable 55 degrees. I'll time it all out for you and have your seven-day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Selena. All right, thanks for that update there, Griffin. Well, in Oxford, a teacher job fair was held at Oxford High School. Here, teachers meet with principals and administrators from the Oxford School District, adding a more personal touch to the job application process. WCBI's Parker King joins us live in the studio to tell us more about this event. Parker. Selena, you can almost compare it to speed dating, where teachers meet with administrators for a short period of time. This method is fairly new, only being around for the last six years, but it's already proving to be better than previous methods. Teachers came from across the state to try this new type of applying for a job. It's an opportunity for us to show off this school, our district, and our, and our community. 
For an entire morning, principals and administrators met face-to-face -face with potential employees, something that's hard to do during a normal workday. What we found, and the reason we went to this, is many people, uh, potential job applicants, were uh, would show up at the schools and, and they'd want to face to face with the principal or the administration and, and sometimes that just doesn't work and so uh, it, it puts us ahead of the game and trying to recruit the best and get the best teachers here. On the personal level this is a better method of meeting applicants. Before most applicants would be online through websites and emails. You're looking over that and you're trying to get to know who someone is by just looking at a piece of paper or looking at a computer screen and that's very very difficult. And this also provides a go-to bank of applicants when a position opens up within the school district. Through this, employers know whether or not they would make a good fit to their staff. The job fair is absolutely a benefit. Uh, I, I, no telling the number of applicants that we have hired after having met them here at this job fair. I, I feel confident that there will be some people that I've talked to today that will get full interviews with me in the future. In Oxford, Parker King, WCBI News. Organizers told me that this type of fair has also spread to their neighboring school district, Lafayette County, and it's only a matter of time before this spreads across the state. Selena, back to you. Alrighty, well, coming up after the break, we take a look at one of the South's favorite dishes. We've got all the sounds and secrets for this dish. Stay with us. You're watching WCBI News at 10 with Selena Schaefer. Welcome back. Well, it's crawfish season, and WCBI's David Carroll shows us that there are for that for one local crawfish boiler. However, it's proving to be a busy and a very profitable time of the year. Well, they say it, they can smell it all down, all the way down the road. You know, I don't know. Parts done. Yeah, those are getting right right there. I don't use just one seasoning. I use two or three, and we got it where we wanted it, so we keep it the same. I come from Jennings, Louisiana. I cook about 800 to 1,000 pounds every week. I saw there wasn't anybody doing it in this area about eight years ago, and uh, I just went and started learning how to do it. This is our cooking, our, our cooking trailer that we have. We have cooking pots, soaking pots, that we just move everything down the line. It's a progression of how you cook your crawfish. It's the potatoes, the corn, mushrooms. Mushrooms we'll put in there. We'll put, it's according to what the customer asks for. If they want sausage in it, we'll cook sausage in it. We can cook cauliflower in it. Any kind of vegetable you want, we can put in this, in this juice and, and, and it's good to eat. Once the people learn where we're at and learn that we have good crawfish, they come. They come from everywhere. We just cook crawfish. That's what everybody in the South likes to do this time of year is crawfish, and it's a, it's a social thing. It's really not something that you can just go and have a meal on uh, and just have fun. Forecast lows for tonight are in the mid and upper 40s. We've got some showers and storms moving into the region right now. I'll time it all out for you when it gets here tomorrow. Coming up in just a few minutes right after the break. Your first alert weather forecast with meteorologist Griffin Hardy. Time is now 10:15. We've got some showers and some isolated thunderstorms moving into our northern counties right here in Prentice and Tishomingo counties and just north of Tupelo. That's where most of the showers are right now. Some of them are, or actually the bulk of them are outside of our viewing area, but these will gradually move into the region as we go in through the night. We're at 55 here in Columbus, 55 in West Point, Calhoun City, Grenada, and 56 in Winona. Right in the mid 50s will continue to cool down as well as the night goes on. We had a cooling trend to start off this weekend, and now we have a warming trend. 15 degrees warmer compared to this time yesterday. 
today in Columbus and 20 degrees warmer farther to the west in Winona. So we're going to continue to warm up as the week goes on. Uh, remaining cool for the start of the week and then warmer once we get to the midpoint of the week. We've got showers and storms for tomorrow and the rain will be on and off as the uh, week goes on all the way through Wednesday. So here's the short term future cast model. We've got winds coming in from the south and that is what's producing a lot of these showers and uh, isolated thunderstorms that'll be coming in overnight into tomorrow morning. Here's 8 o'clock tomorrow. Widespread scattered thunderstorms uh, across the region lasting through the morning hours. Better chances mainly to the south in the uh, Golden Triangle region. That's where we'll see the most of this rainfall. And then that'll make its way out of here by Monday afternoon and evening. It'll we'll get a break from the rain. But uh, coming back on Tuesday, Tuesday morning, we have a better chance for some more showers for our northern counties. So we kind of switch where the rain is going, so to speak. And then Tuesday afternoon and evening, we get another break. But then this next cold front comes in. And this is where we have potential for for some more stronger thunderstorms. Right now, there's a bit of uncertainty on just how strong this front will be. Definitely going to be seeing some severe weather farther to the north of us in areas like Nashville and Louisville and St. Louis. That's where most of the severe weather will be. Farther down to the south, we'll expect some thunderstorms, but just not quite certain how strong they'll be. So we'll continue to watch that as the week goes on. We're looking at pretty good rainfall totals over the next 72 hours, anywhere from an inch and a half to two and a half inches of rainfall expected here in our viewing area. And in the seven-day forecast, steady rain chances again Monday through Tuesday, slimmer rain chances on for Tuesday at 40%. Thursday and Friday, more sunshine comes back into the region, and we've got more seasonal temperatures with highs in the low 60s. Selena? All right, coming up next, we have a full recap of sports and basketball. Tom, next with sports. Here's WCBI Sports with Tom Apple. With South Carolina's win over Kentucky today, the Gamecocks will be the number one seed in the SEC tournament, but history was still to be had for Hale State Hoops. The Bulldogs needed a win against the Lady Vols to clinch its first SEC regular season championship in program history. 10,500 fans packed out a sold-out Humphrey Coliseum for an emotional senior day. All four seniors, Chinway Akori, Dominique Dillingham, Brianna Richardson, and Katera Chapel, recognized as Mrs. MSU, went for their first ever SEC championship against Tennessee. It was a slow start for Mississippi State, but Brianna Richardson trying to get things going with the two on the layup. Mississippi State kept it close. But Tennessee opens the floodgates here late. Here off the, it's a fight for a glass loose ball. 50-50 ball bounces Tennessee's way, and Diamond to Shields drains the three. She'd have a big day against Mississippi State Volunteers. Up big, but Blair Schaefer trying to rally Mississippi State here. Check out the drive and the finish from Blair. That's a nice soft lay in there. Tennessee would be up by 16 at halftime, but second half, Roe Johnson's going to put on the rally cap herself. She's going to drain the triple here from deep. Roe wasn't done there. Look at this move by Johnson, the step back three ball. Smooth left hand jumper. Lead was down to 14 after three. Here we go to the fourth. Brianna Richardson, she's going to drive. She's going to get hoop and the harm. That cuts the lead down to 10, but it wouldn't get any closer than that. DeShields drives for two. She's going to get the hoop and the harm with the and one bucket. Her and Jamie Narrett had 47 of Tennessee's 82 points. Tennessee rolls over Mississippi State 82 to 64. Our Robbie Donahoe recaps the evening at the hump. It was as if Tennessee could do no wrong. And in the process, nothing could really go right for Mississippi State. On a night where the Bulldogs were one win away from their first ever SEC championship in program history, volunteers spoiled senior day and MSU's dreams of a conference crown. I, I, don't, I don't know when I've, I've been more disappointed in myself um, than at any time in my career. So proud of what we've accomplished uh, as a program, and yet days like today just humble you. For us, we had seven championships at the beginning of the year that we could win. This is the first one now that we it's out of the equation. It was an emotional event from the pregame ceremony with the four seniors to the final buzzer for Mississippi State 
With so much on the line, though, the Bulldogs continue to remain focused and motivated for what's to come in the postseason. You need to fix a lot of things, you know, winning masks, your weaknesses. So we have a lot of weaknesses, and we just need to get back in the gym and fix them. And I expect the team to refocus and uh, be accountable for what is going wrong. We got to look ourselves in the mirror, and um, and we've got to we've got to we've got to respond. That's the thing about character. When things go kind of start sliding and going south, and your your real character is revealed. Part of your character is how you respond in these situations. As disappointed as I am today, I'll be right back ready to go tomorrow. One record that was achieved on Sunday evening, the largest crowd to watch a women's basketball game in Mississippi. 10,500 sold out Humphrey Coliseum, and all 10,500 hope there are more records to be broken when the postseason begins this upcoming week. In Starkville, Robbie Donahoe, WCBI Sports. Here tonight at the Pavilion, Ole Miss seniors would finish the regular season in the best way possible. The Rebels started out of the gates fast and held Texas A&M to its lowest scoring output on the season. Shandrika Sessom led the way for the Rebels in its 62-49 to win. With the W today, the Rebels get a first round bye in the NCAA tournament and they'll take on LSU thanks to the win. Rebels look to bring out the brooms yet again against a ranked opponent. See if the Rebels get the sweep next to sports. Welcome back and thanks for sticking with us. You can't get much hotter than Ole Miss baseball at the moment. The Diamond Rebs look to bring out the brooms yet again against a ranked opponent. This weekend's victim being UNC Wilmington. Ole Miss also looking to stay undefeated here in the early season. Have been impressive early on and Brady Fiegel gets it going for the Rebels. He's going to get the strikeout here, swing and a miss. Fiegel looked dominant early on for Ole Miss, but then bottom third we go. It's run support time. Ryan Olenek, he delivers with a shot to center. That would bring home Cooper Johnson and Gray Kessinger. Rebels would go up two to nothing. And then we're going to stay in the bottom of the third. Two outs, runner on third. It's going to be Cole Zabowski. He delivers another shot out to center. That brings Olenek home. Ole Miss extends the lead three nothing early on. Rebels were not done just yet. Colby Bortles, the moonshot out to center. See ya. You're not catching that one. Two run Jack makes it 5 0 Rebels lead. And then we'll head to the bottom of the seventh. It's going to be that man yet again. The senior, Colby Bortles. Ole Miss up 6 1. He delivers yet again for some more insurance for Ole Miss. The blooper to deep center. That's going to bring home Tate Blackman on the tag. Ole Miss goes on to win 8 to 6 over UNC Wilmington and gets another weekend sweep. Rebels are now 7-0 and on the season. Here's the players and head coach Mike Bianco after today's win. Feels good. Feels good. Um, we're really confident right now going into, uh, you know, midweek game against Memphis and then going to Houston. You know, we have a lot of confidence in, you know, playing, uh, you know, two really good teams on the weekend. And uh, it's good. It's good to, uh, you know, come out victorious. But we're just resilient. You know, anytime we get punched in the mouth, we bounce right back and, uh, you know, we've been doing it all year, and uh, we've got a good team chemistry, and I think we're always there to pick each other up, and uh, hopefully we can keep that going. You've got to be pleased, you know, through, uh, you know, two weekends and seven games. And, you know, I just said it's not coaches speak to, you know, certainly we got a ways to go. There's some things that we got to clean up and uh, in a lot of different areas, but, you know, it's hard to imagine that we could have done much better against some really good competition. You know, it's, it's one thing to win seven games, but, you know, six of them are against teams that are ranked in the top 25, and so I'm really proud of the way we played. Mississippi State also in action, struggling early on against Marist. They would be trailing 8-1 to one through 5. It's 9-3, to three, and Luke Alexander puts on the rally caps. He's going to bring two home for the Bulldogs. It's now 9-5. to five. Ole Miss trying to, or excuse me, Mississippi State trying to claw their way back into this one. We're going to stay in the inning. Ryan Gridley, he connects on one out to right. That's going to bring in Jake Mangum. Then it's going to be a play at the plate for Luke Alexander. Gets in, beats the tag. He's safe. It's 9-7. to seven. Mississippi State inching their way back into this one. But bottom seventh base is loaded for Jake Mangum. This was the real turning point for Mississippi State. Mangum gets a blooper over the pitching mound, brings home one, but they'd only be able to bring home one after the base is loaded. Be bottom of the ninth, last chance for State. Stovall's going to pop out to right. Mississippi State can't finish the rally. They fall to Marist, 9-8. to eight. 
And that will do it for your sports for this evening. We'll have a last look at your forecast coming up after the break. And a final look at your seven-day forecast. Rain Monday through Wednesday. Sunshine doesn't come back until Thursday and Friday. The end of the week looks pretty nice, but Selena, it's going to be a wet and pretty dreary start to this week. Uh-oh, just the way we want to start a Monday. I know. Blue <laughs> make Monday. It, make it even harder to come. I get out of bed, you know? I know, I know. It's I'll well, just sleep, though. Exactly. You know? yeah. It's so true. All righty. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us this evening. We hope you have a good one. Take care.